Yo, what's up, world? It is your boy APW Sports signing back in for another tier ranking video. Now, in today's tier ranking video, we're gonna rank the top defenses in the NFL. We have the best, we have good, we have average, we have worse, and we have the D down there, but for that, I'm gonna put trash. Just pure trash. So today, we're gonna write the best defenses, and without further ado, let's dive into it. I'm striving to get rich. That's why I almost went two years without buying shoes and fits. Things change now. My mom hearing me with my music, and she look a little prouder. First up, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars. This one is kind of a struggle between best and good. Even though they had a kind of a down year last season as a team, but it's not. It wasn't really fully them. I think the offense put them in some type of bad spots at times. So for this sake, we're going to go with the best. We're going to rate them as one of the top defenses in the NFL. They still have Jalen Ramsey, A.J. Bouye, Calais Campbell, Yannick Ngakwe, Telvin Smith. They really have a lot of great pieces on that defense. So for this sake, they're going to be one of the best defenses. Now the Giants is up next. Ooh. This one is going to be just slightly a little bit tough. Adding Alex Ogletree kind of helped a little bit last season. Losing Snacks Harrison made a big deal. They also lost Olivier Vernon as well. The Giants have a lot of work to do on defense, but despite Janoris Jenkins, even though I think he's on a downside. But for this, I'm not going to say average. They're going to be a low-tier defense this year. I just don't see them being average at all. Even with a struggling offense, I think but they're still going to be in bad spots, so I'm going to put them in worse. Next up, we have the Tennessee Titans. They played pretty well on the first-year head coach, Mike Vrabel, who's a defensive man, and he also went to Ohio State. But he really had the defense, really playing at a good level. Now, Brian Arakpo... Retiring, that kind of does have a little bit of an impact on what the defense was as far as pass rushing. So for the Titans, I'm going to put them in an average defense. They, they can have a potential to be good even with the guys they had. They have Malcolm Butler, who I think he's a little bit overpaid. But also at the same time, he is still one of the better corners in the game. He had a little bit of a struggle last season. It, he still has to adjust to a new scheme. Just plugging and placing people in schemes doesn't always work right away. So with the Titans, I'm going to go with average on that. Now next up, we have the Houston Texans. Last year, I would have put them at these two levels. But losing Tyran Matthew and Kareem Jackson on a decent secondary is going to hurt them. And Jadavion Clowney is an unknown. Even though you still have J.J. Watt and Whitney Mercedes in, on your defense, I can't put them at best because of the secondary. So for the Houston Texans, they're going to stay at good. They're not... Uh, average defense. They're above average. They play very well. So for this sake, I'm going to leave the Texans at a good defense. Next up, the Dallas Cowboys. I'm not going to lie to you guys. <laughs> the way they defense played last year was a big surprise to me. And Vander Esch, if it wasn't for Darius Leonard and Indianapolis, I think he would have been the defensive rookie of the year. He had an outstanding season filling in for the often injured Sean Lee. They still have Jalen Smith with his un with his game changes speed at the middle. 
They still had Demarcus Lawrence. They smartly locked him up for the next four to five years. I can't remember the exact details on the contract, but the Cowboys defense, I'm also going to put them at a good tier. They are really playing well. And Byron Jones in the back end as well. So I'm going to leave them at good. Next up, the Cincinnati Bengals. Oh, this team is going to be trash, lad. Trash, trash this coming season. If you haven't watched my video about the top teams that's going to take a fall this year, this Bengals team is one of them. Outside of Geno Atkins, they do not have much on defense. Which I, I kind of argued they could have went defense with the first round pick. Even though it's sad that Jonah Williams is gone for the season already. But, I, ooh, the Bengals defense. I said the Jingles Atkins. I can't even think of a name. So, for the Bengals, they're trash. I'm just going to replace this D with trash. They're trash. They are going to be trash. So next up on this list, we have the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, this defense was also piss poor horribly last year. Losing D4, Justin Houston, and Eric Berry. I think that's going to hurt, especially the loss of Eric Berry, his leadership, and all that he went through with the Hoskins lymphoma situation. I really, really think that losing him is going to be a huge cog just for the mental sake of the defense. They did pick up Tyran Matthew in free agency and also traded for Frank Clark. But I, I can't put them at trash because of those names and they added decent pieces. But I'll leave them at worst just for the sake of this. I'll, it's a wait and see. I really do hope the defense kind of matches up to some sort of level that Patrick Mahomes in the offense has. I just don't see it. They did fire the defensive coordinator at the last year, so hopefully they get some change. Much needed change scheme-wise, but I can't put them at trash. They, they have decent names. It just didn't jail well, so I'm going to leave them at worst. Next up is the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, playing with Fletcher Cox, Malcolm Jenkins, Brandon Graham, who is, I think, is one of the underrated pieces in the NFL, underrated pass rushers in the league. He makes good plays. He stays consistent. I really think that the Eagles defense is going to be a little bit better because they lost a ton last year. Especially on the back end in the corners. The only consistent cog that they had was Malcolm Jenkins. But the only thing with him is that he's holding out. Trying to get a new contract. And who knows how that situation is going to turn out. So for the sake. I will leave the Eagles defense. At average. Just for the sake of Malcolm Jenkins. The leader. The back end of the defense. You don't know whether he's going to play or not. I think he's going to play because of the type of spirit that he has as a player. He just wants to get something restructured. I hope they get it done because he is a key piece. Fletcher Cox up the middle. He's very solid up the middle. One of the best defensive tackles in the NFL. So at this, I'm going to leave the Eagles at average. So next up we have on this list is the Los Angeles Rams. With Aaron Donald, the absolute best defensive tackle in the league right now. The reigning two-time defensive player of the year. Now, they do lose a little bit. Losing in Dominican Sue as a piece next to him. So, that's going to hurt just a tad. Dante Fowler Jr., I think, really found a home in L.A. You also have Marcus Peters in the key to the league on the corners. But this defense, with Wade Phillips, scheme-wise, I'm going to put them at one of the best in the league. They they really held the Patriots 
down in the Super Bowl. If it wasn't for a couple of misplays here and there and the offense being absolute garbage, then I really think the Rams would have went, took away the game from the Phillip, from the uh, Patriots. So for this, with Wade Phillips leading the defense as the defensive coordinator, they're one of the best in the league. Next up, we have the New England Patriots, the defending champion, unfortunately, New England Patriots. This is going to be... Now, I'm going to struggle with this between best and good because no matter what, Bill Belichick and whoever he has as defensive coordinator, that defense is always top 10. They always have little... Sp- even no name players that come in, step in, and make a plays, even though they lost Trey Flowers this offseason to the Lions. They have Dante Hightower still. They have Stephon Gilmore, who played at an elite level last year and also made the game winning pick in a Super Bowl. I just don't see them as being elite. But can you really count out Bill Belichick? And can you really count out his scheme to set people down? Just for that alone, I'm going to put the Patriots at best. Scheme-wise, I don't think they have the kind of talent that the Jaguars and the Rams have. But Belichick and his schemes, no matter who you plug and play in that system, it usually finds itself working year after year after year. So I'm going to leave the Patriots as one of the best. Next up, we have, speaking of the Patriots, one of Bill Belichick's former protégés and Matt Patricia and the Detroit Lions defense. Now, losing Ziggy Asa is kind of going to be hurtful for a little bit, even though they did add the aforementioned Trey Flowers in free agency. The Lions defense has been up and down, and there's a Bears fan watching them in the NFC North. You never know what you're going to get. So, for them to be good, good, or bad at times, I'm going to leave the Detroit Lions at average. I don't really see them being too good this year. I don't see them being really bad. This defense is probably going to be a middle of the pack defense. I don't see too much from them. I don't see too much can come from that. So, next up, we have the Arizona Cardinals. Outside of Patrick Peterson, his defense has been changing a lot. Even though you have Chandler Jones, who I also think is another underrated player in the NFL. The, ah, the Cardinals. Buda Baker really stepped up. He had a really solid season last year. I, I seen that firsthand, the way he played against the Bears. What was that? We three. He had a solid game. He's he can really play. But I'm gonna leave them probably at worst. Cause you have to think about it. Patrick Peterson has suspended the first eight games. That's gonna really, really hurt the Arizona Cardinals not having one of the premier shutdown corners in the lineup. So for this coming season, I'm going to put them at worst because that loss is going to hurt a ton. So next up, the next defense we have to rank is the Washington Redskins. Ryan Kerrigan is an absolute solid pass rusher. He's been very consistent throughout his career. I can't really name too many people. Oh, that that just reminds me. Josh Norman. Josh Norman, I I think he's starting to fall quite a bit. It may be schematic-wise watching him, but he's not the same elite corner that he was when he was with the Carolina Panthers. Washington has been up and down defensively as far as I can remember my whole entire life. (laughs) So for this sake, I'm going to leave the Washington Redskins at an average defense. I don't see them being too good. I don't see them being worse. We're going to be average this coming year. Next up, 
the Buffalo Bills. Now, this is an up-and-coming defense. They just drafted Ed Oliver, which I think was one of the best defensive players outside of Nick Bosa in this draft. You would have thought Ed Oliver would have went to Oakland at four, but he ended up slipping the Buffalo Bills. They jumped right on top of him. They are one of the good building defenses. They are very young with Davies White and company. The Buffalo Bills, I'm going to leave them. I think they're going to be sneaky good this year. They had a decent defense last year, but with inconsistent quarterback play, especially from Nathan Peterman, I don't know why that guy is even in the league if he's still in the league. Let me know in the comment section if Nathan Peterman is still in the league. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but either way it goes, the Buffalo Bills are going to be a sneaky good defense this year. They're going to have better quarterback play to put them in better situations. And the Bills defense is really solid. So I'm going to leave them at good. Next up, we have the Indianapolis Colts with Darius Leonard. I think was the best. <laughs> he was the most sneaky player in last year's draft. You didn't expect Gary Slender to have the season he had. And you also have Malik Hooker on the back end from the Ohio State University. Um, he's more, he's an Ed Reed type. He still hasn't lived up to his full potential yet, in my opinion. But the Colts last year had a really solid defense. So I'm going to put the Colts, I'm going to leave them at good. I can't put them at average until I really see Darius Leonard's second year if he doesn't have that sophomore, that dreaded sophomore slump this year. So I'm going to leave the Colts at a good defense. Up next is New Orleans Saints, led by Marshawn Lattimore, Von Bell, Cam Jordan. They have some really solid pieces on this defense. Now, a sneaky stat is that they were one of the top ranked run defenses. But I think that number is a bit misleading as the offense was scoring so many points. Teams didn't have the option to run the ball because a lot of them were playing catch up. So that stat is a little bit misleading. But even with that, with Sheldon Rankin still in the fold, I'm going to have to... I'm going to also put the Saints at good. They have they are really young, especially on the back end. So I'm gonna leave the Saints at a good defense. Up next, we have the Seattle Seahawks. Who they've lost a ton over the past few years with losses of Cam Chancellor, Earl Thomas, Michael Bennett, Cliff Avery, Richard Sherman. You name it, the Legion of Boom is no more. No more Legion of Boom. They did not lead. They did not keep Frank Clark. They ended up trading him to the Kansas City Chiefs, which I think is gonna really hurt. They don't have that skill pass rusher, even though signing Ziggy Ansah will help. But the way that system is, they need that good pass rush and also the good secondary play and. They really don't have that right now. So even with Bobby Wagner playing at the elite level, I'm going to lead the Seahawks at an average defense. They just lost too many pieces. And I don't think they really retooled a lot of those pieces. So I'm going to leave the Seahawks at average. So next up is my Chicago Bears defense. I can go all day long about how good this defense is going to be. You got Khalil Mack, Cal Fuller, Eddie Jackson, Akeem Hicks locking up the middle. Sneaky player is Eddie Goldman, who I think is going to have a breakout season. Now, losing Vic Fangio is going to be a bit of a hit, but with the talent we have and with the players coming out now and saying that they really haven't felt much of a change. <laughs> There's no other way I can go. But to put the Bears at elite. After the season I witnessed last year, how great that defense is. The defense was already going to be top 
five top ten last season, and then you add Khalil Mack. Ooh, the Bears defense is gonna be absolutely scary. And Danny Trevathan, let me check on him just for a second. He is one of the most underrated linebackers in the NFL. My, he he really does a good job of leading the team, making sure the guys are in the right spots. He is very underrated. And then you pair him with Roquan Smith, also in the middle of the 3-4. The Bears are going to be special this year. And then you add HaHa Clinton Dix. This Bears defense is going to be crazy trouble. This absolute trouble. I could talk about that all day, but for the sake of this video, let's move on. So next we have the Denver Broncos. This one's a little bit tough. Bradley Chubb and Von Miller are going to form a very elite pass rushing duo. You still have Chris Harris Jr. with a player with Bradley Roby from The Ohio State University as your cornerback tandem. So the Denver Broncos, despite, the, I think they're going to, the question for the Denver Broncos is going to be at the linebacker position. Can they really can they really have that Brandon Marshall? Not that receiver Brandon Marshall, but Brandon Marshall type of middle linebacker that kind of gets everything in order. But I can't put them at elite yet because of the linebacker huge question, in my opinion. But this Broncos defense is still one of the top defenses in the league. So I'm going to leave them at a good defense. So next, the Oakland Raiders. Next year is going to be weird coming in Las Vegas, but the Oakland Raiders, this defense, Clarence Farrell, while being he's a nice player, I don't think taking him at four was the best move they did. It, it, it's really tough to write this Raiders defense because there's a lot of moving pieces around. I'm going to leave them at worst. Just for now, I really got to see a lot of what they have defensively. Based off last year's not really too good. So for the Raiders, going to leave them at worst for now. They're not trash like the Bengals, but I'm going to leave them at worst for now. Next up, we have the Los Angeles almost says San Diego. I'm still used to that, guys. <laughs> So next up, we have the Los Angeles Chargers. I am going to have them at elite. One of the best defenses in the league. You have Joey Bosa from The Ohio State University. Uh, you have Melvin Ingram at the linebacker position. You have Desmond King on the back end. You have another good second-year safety with, ooh, excuse me, Derwin James. This defense is young and there's still more room for them to grow, but for what I watched the last year of the Chargers defense, even though they kind of struggled against the Patriots, but I'm going to leave them as one of the top defenses in the league this year. I think they're really going to be like a top five, top ten defense with the pass rushing that they have. This defense is going to be something good this year. Next up, the Miami Dolphins. They lost Cameron Wake. They lost a lot. The defense wasn't already any good, too much good anyway. Even though you have a good second-year player in Jerome Baker from the Ohio State University. Um, they have Raquan McMillan also coming back from the Ohio State University. Uh, they also have, I can't think of the guy's name that led the league in picks. Xavier Howard, I don't, to me, Xavier Howard, I don't think he really was a shutdown type of corner. I think he was more to get, He, I think he more was an interceptor at the right place at the right time. I really don't see him as one of the elite corners in the league. And they don't really have too much of a pass rush to begin with. So with this, I'm going to leave the Dolphins at worst. They have a lot of work to do to be a good defense. They have a lot of work. But outside of that, we're moving to those trash Green Bay Packers. I want to put them at worst just because they're Green Bay. 
But <laughs> for the sake of to be non biased, I'm really gonna. They lost Clay Matthews Jr., which I think was gonna be a lot, a, a big loss. Not even in terms of play, but in terms of that leadership in the locker room. The guy that kind of got everything set on defense. They did trade Ha Ha Clayton Dix, which I think was a mistake. So for Green Bay, even though they did sign Adrian Amos, a little punk, go for the Bears or the Packers. Um, they did sign the Smiths to be on the linebacker and the D line. I'm gonna leave them at worst. I have to, I really have to see a lot of those pieces get in order. Even though you still have. Uh, Mike Daniels in the middle, which I think is a he's a very, very solid player. But for this, I'm going to leave the Packers at worst. I can't put them at average just yet because my questions would... You know what? I'm not going to leave. I, I'm going to put them at average. Jair Alexander's his rookie season was a really solid rookie season for a corner. I think he has real room to grow from there. They did draft Devin Bush from the team up north this year's draft. The only problem where I have with that is that Devin Bush is he has to stay healthy and he has to stay productive. But if that talent really goes out, he can really be something really good for the Green Bay Packers. So I'm gonna leave them at an average defense. Up next is the San Francisco 49ers. Now they this defense is very, I think they're going to be a very underrated defense this year with DeForest Buckner, and then you draft Nick Bosa from the Ohio State University. Uh, then you also have Richard Sherman. Even though he's kind of on somewhat of a decline, he's still one of those corners that you do not want to throw in his direction. So for this, I'm going to leave them at an average defense, but they do have the sneaky potential to move up to the good slot. I really think the 49ers defense, this is also going to be one of those things I'm going to look out for this coming season. I think the 49ers defense is really going to be sneaky. They are really going to be sneaky good. I really think that all the pieces are going to start to come together and they're going to start to play very, very well. They're going to be an underrated team. So I want to put the 49ers at average. Up next, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. <sighs> they did draft Devin White. They also lost Gerald McCoy. Well, they didn't lose him. They let go of Gerald McCoy for Indominus Sue, which I don't think that's really going to work too well. Even though they kind of play a somewhat similar type of game, I just think Gerald McCoy was He's a better pass rusher than Indominus Su, and Indominus Su is better against the run. So he might fit because Buccaneers corners I don't think are too good. Even in the with the loss of Quan Alexander to help in pass coverage, I just don't think the Bucks are really going to be that good of a defense this year. So I'm going to leave them at the worst tier. Just for the sake of this, I'm leaving them at worst. I don't think they're really going to be too solid this year. More of their questions are, I think more of their questions on offense to defense. But their defense is still not really that good yet. I think they're going to leave them a little bit of time for everything to kind of come together. Up next, the NFC North Minnesota Vikings. Now, the Minnesota Vikings... They still have one of the best safeties, I think, in the league in Harrison Smith. You have Daniel Hunter, who's coming off a very, very solid season. You have Linval Joseph in the middle of your defense. They were close to losing Anthony Barr in free agency, but he wound up staying, which I think that was the best move for him to do and for the Vikings as a team. Xavier Rhodes, he was kind of... Nicked and tucked with the injury bug last season. He's still one of the top corners in the league. And then you have Mike Zimmer as your head coach, who's a defensive genius. So I'm going to leave 
them being, I don't think they're going to be elite, but I really think they're going to be a top 10 defense. The Minnesota Vikings are a really, really good defense. I'm going to leave them in the top 10. Next up, we have the Baltimore Ravens. They were a top defense last season, but I think the loss of C.J. Mosey is going to hurt them a bit. They did sign Earl Thomas in free agency to kind of help with the back end of the safeties after losing Eric Weddle to the Rams in free agency. But I can't put them back at elite, even though they have great linebacker play. But I think the loss of C.J. Mosey is going to hurt them a lot. I'm going to leave them in the good tier for the sake of this video. I'm going to leave them at good. They have a really good scheme. They, the Ravens are traditionally a top defense anyway, and that tradition has not left. They're still one of the top defenses in the league, even today. So I'm going to leave them at a good defense. The Atlanta Falcons up next. Now this team was really, really hit with the injury bug last season. Losing Keanu Lee, Keanu Neal in week one, which I think is one of the most underrated safeties in the league. They lost him in week one against Philly with a torn ACL. They played most of the season without linebacker Deion Jones. Even though one of the sneaky linebackers, a Loku, a Lucan, I can't pronounce the guy's name for save my life. But he also played a very, very good part in the defense. You also have Desmond Trufant, who's played really well. So for the Falcons, I'm going to leave them. I'm going to leave them at probably average. They have the potential to be good. But the question is health. I think the more of the question is not the scheme when it comes to Dan Quinn and the defense. I think it's more of health. If they stay healthy throughout the year, they are gonna, they can easily be in this range right here at the good defense. But health is going to be the biggest thing with the Atlanta Falcons this coming season. Can the defense stay healthy? They do have Casey, who tied for the lead league in interceptions with Kyle Fuller and four bitches, Xavier and Howard, with seven picks last year. So he can also be a big player in the defense, but the main thing with the Falcons is health. Can they stay healthy? So up next is the Carolina Panthers. Even they do lose their big leadership when Julius Peppers announced his retirement. They did pick up Gerald McCoy in a post draft move. You still have Luke Keekley out there dominating as he usually does his first team all pro play. The corners, that's still gonna be the suspect question about the Carolina Panthers defense. Even after the loss of Josh Norman. The corners haven't really been the same. The safeties are kind of iffy to me. So I'm going to leave the Panthers at an average as well. They have a lot of questions to be answered. I think more with the secondary than anything. The front seven is still safe. It's still going to be a good... Even with the loss of Thomas Davis to the Chargers, they're still going to be a solid defense with Ron Rivera and his scheme with the head coach. So I'm going to leave him there. Next up, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers. You do have TJ Watt, who's up and emerging. It's kind of his... He's almost playing like his brother. He's not JJ, but the guy can really play. I think Edmonds... I don't think he's... He hasn't reached his full potential just yet. Now, he did draft Devin Bush. Which one did they draft? Yeah, they did draft Devin Bush. But yeah, they did draft Devin Bush. They traded up to select Devin Bush, which I think was a very solid move for the Steelers to make to kind of get that replacement for... Ryan Shazier, who lost, they lost to a devastating back injury two seasons ago. I'm also going to put the Steelers at average. Joe Hayden is really getting up their age, even though he's had solid play. But I'm going to put the Steelers at average. 
Up next, we have the New York Football Jets, not Giants, ha <laughs> Football Jets. They did add C.J. Mosley. They were going to add Anthony Barr, but he chose to stay in Minnesota. The Jets' defense, I'm going to leave them at... They're going to leave them just at worst for now. They, they really just... They still are rebuilding defense. Adding C.J. Mosey is a big, big plus. But I still see them as a reloading, retooling defense. That can really, really just... Use another year to kind of really get themselves up. Really use a year to kind of get themselves up. So I'm going to leave the Jets at worst. I can't put them at average just yet until I really see how they play as well. And last but not least, we have the Cleveland Browns. They drafted really well the last two years with defense as far as Miles Garrett, number one overall in 2017. And then you have Denzel Ward from the Ohio State University. You also have a sneaky corner pickup, which I think is going to be really well for them. Drafting Greedy Williams in the second round, he slipped to them, which I think that's going to be another cog and just... <laughs> The Browns team is going to be very, very sneaky good. So I'm going to put them as a good defense. I'm going to leave the Cleveland Browns as a good defense. I really think they're going to play very, very solid this year. Even though I really do think Gerald McCoy should have signed there instead of Carolina. That would have been a big, big part to the Cleveland Browns defense. But Cleveland is going to be a really good defense this coming year. Well, guys... That does it for my rankings of the defenses in the NFL for the upcoming 2019 season. If you guys disagree or agree with anything that I've ranked or anything that I have said, please leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. I really want to know what you guys think about the defenses heading into the season. I really want to know you guys thought of your favorite team's defense and what you can expect from them. And be sure to like the video, comment your thoughts, share the video, and subscribe to the channel as that only helps the channel to grow. And also click that notification bell to be notified of when I upload a video. Now, I'm your boy APW Sports signing out. Peace out! I wanna say thank you to my mom and my daddy For making love the night that you had me Wanna thank my friends, my sister and my brother